Fireside Fiddle Corner. As you can see, I play the fiddle, and also I play the violin, although it's the same instrument. Uh, I've been asked all my life what's the difference between a violin and a fiddle, and I'd like to maybe talk a little bit about that today. Uh, there are simply hundreds of fiddle styles in the world, but the most popular that people know of are, are uh, Celtic fiddling, uh, bluegrass fiddling, Cajun. Um, so today I want to talk about the Celtic fiddling. And we've got, we've got to think about bagpipes. The Scottish and Irish fiddling were going to imitate the bagpipes and how they do that, the sound is always going through the air, it never stops in bagpipes. And so what we have to do is we have to re-articulate a note. I know that sounds complicated to re-articulate, it just means playing the same note again. Classical people would take a, a different stroke each time. But with the bagpipe, you can't stop the air or the bow, so you have to stop the string from ringing by using one of these fingers. So, so we get that type of, of an effect. So we take a piece like the Three Little Drummers. You hear those three notes, and if we play it like the Celts would play it, we would reduplicate those notes by doing this. So we have um, the sound of the bagpipes, and if we talk, take a little look at that, we're actually moving our fingers non-classically, because our finger has to come up. So everything that we do when we type anything or play the piano or anything like that, our fingers are always coming down. So this type of technique, you have to actually have your fingers coming up. So if you can imagine typing like that, it'd be really difficult, so that's the technique. And when I first started doing that, I found my tendons got kind of sore and I almost got tendonitis. So it's a good thing that in Ireland and Scotland, the kids start playing this early so their, their hands get used to it. So, Also, this technique is also uh, used for like uh, embellishing a note, like vibrato. On long notes, classical players, they'll go. So each one of those long notes, they use what's called vibrato. So that's training your arms, your hand to vary the note. But we can use the same, um, technique with, with, uh, with what I just demonstrated. We call those a cut or a hammer-on for a uh, slow piece. So I can use that to embellish those long notes. was the famous Neil Gow's Lament. Neil Gow was the, the Scottish king's fiddler, I think, in 1765. So there we have some, some examples how the actual style of the fiddle music is a specific technique. There's one more I'd like to play. It's, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, the Celtic Boran. It's a hand drum that they hold and they, and they play like this. And so that provides rhythm. And what they do is they do like a triplet. So that's using the bow as it's, it's a percussive 
nature is used in ricochet, a lot of Spanish violin. So the Celts, they devised this. And uh, so you can hear that little thing. So if I put that into a piece, I'll play the harvest home. Hear the the the, the baran in there. Now I also heard in my travels that um, the reason that the Scottish and the Irish uh, put the sound of the bagpipes and the baran in the fiddle or the violin is because the British banned the bagpipes and because it made the people too nationalistic. But the British couldn't ban the violin or the fiddle because. They play <laughs> the same things. I'd like to finish off now with a piece that's going to incorporate um, some of those and uh, most of those elements. So we'll do uh, Drunken Sailor. Thank you. Join us the next time through. We're going to go to New Orleans and we're going to find out maybe some of the, the tricks of Cajun.